Well, thank you. Thank you all for being here. It's, uh, it's cold and windy, and I'll not keep you because the real purpose of this is for us to gather together and fellowship one with another, salute our veterans, and as has been mentioned, the veterans' families who serve in every way as much as our veterans do. I used to take pride in the fact that when I was Attorney General, they'd call me General. <laughs> but I, it has been pointed out, General Wofford tells me periodically I was no real General, <laughs> but I was an, a real E-5. I, have thought about this my last address as governor to this Veterans Day ceremony. And I'm reminded that oftentimes over the last several years, children in particular, school children visiting the Capitol or when I visit their schools would oftentimes ask a singular question. And in the past several months, the news media has started asking that same singular question in these nostalgic goodbye interviews that inevitably have to occur. Question is, what's the hardest part of your job as governor? And it didn't require a lot of thought. The hardest part of this job is making a phone call to a mother or a wife. I've never had to make one to a husband, but I've had to make them to a father and a grandfather. About a loved one lost in combat that had an Arkansas connection either in the regular armed forces or in our National Guard. I don't even have to make the first call. I can only imagine how difficult it would be to be the bearer of that first item of information. It's bad enough a few days later when I have to call because there's nothing you can say. All you can do is represent three million Arkansans expressing their condolences, their respect, and their love for that sacrifice. It's been that way down through over 200 years history of our country. Men and women have gone off to war and some didn't come back. It is that sacrifice that allows us to gather together. It's that sacrifice that was just reflected in that phenomenal thing called transition of power peacefully in America. It's that phenomenal thing that made you put up with all those commercials. It's the people's willingness to go into harm's way for our way of life. And that's who we celebrate today. That's why, Colonel, those young people and what you all have done trying to ensure that young people have instilled in them some aspects of decorum and ceremony and certainly patriotism is so important. That's why from generation to generation the torch gets passed to new folks who are expected to uphold the honor of this flag and of the ideals that we have as a country. It's why we will remain secure and remain free. We shouldn't just honor veterans on Veterans Day. We should do it at every opportunity. I fall down on the job once in a while, but I try my darndest to shake hands with a person that's in uniform to thank them for their service. Whether it's at Five Guys in North Little Rock or the airport, whether it's in the state capitol or walking up and down the street in the river market. When you see somebody wearing the uniform, it just takes a second to say thank you. And it means so much to be recognized. I often said at 
Memorial Day speeches, and I've even commented on it at Veterans Day speeches, how despicably our Vietnam veterans were treated. And I see one back there with a Vietnam cap on. It was a sad time in our nation about how we treated the men and women who, through no fault of their own, were doing their duty. And what's happened since the first Gulf War is that renewal of patriotism so that our other veterans have not had to experience that. But when you see a Vietnam vet in particular, you ought to hug them. They deserve it. <laughs> Throughout the deployments, one of the things that we continually said around here was, you men and women who are going in harm's way, you go do your mission. You take care of things over there. We'll take care of things back here until you get back. We'll watch over your families. We'll be supportive. Sissy and the veterans folks have done that, but so has virtually every organization associated with men and women in uniform. Well, now most of them are back. Now most of them are home, and it's something we still need to do for them when they're back home. We need to hire them. We need to make sure they've got jobs. We need to make sure they're well protected. We need to make sure that we thank them. And so, in my last opportunity to address as governor the Veterans Day ceremony, and my last opportunity as a public official, I want you all to know, I love you. <laughs>